Since late August, something like 400,000 Rohingya refugees have crossed from Myanmar to Bangladesh. That's more than 100,000 new arrivals a week. And there were, in fact, almost 400,000 Rohingya in Bangladesh before this latest flare-up of the conflict in Myanmar. There, in Rakhine province, there are reports of villages being torched and hundreds of people killed. But one of the more astonishing statistics, though, is that something like 60% of those arriving in Bangladesh are children. That's a UNICEF uh, estimate. But it's not surprising that Save the Children have talked about this as a child protection crisis. Over a thousand children have arrived unaccompanied by any family at all. Well, the former Prime Minister of Denmark, Hella Thorning Schmidt, now runs the international uh, part of Save the Children and joins us from the United Nations in New York. And a, a good evening to you. Thanks for, for joining us. And I what is remarkable about this is the speed at which it is all happening, the numbers in such a short period of time. It's hard to think of parallels. It is very hard to think of a parallel, and uh, what we are seeing is that it might even get much worse. Uh, some of our people on the ground are predicting that before the new year, we could have 600,000 uh, children crossing that uh, border. These are people who have seen things that uh, children should never ever be experiencing and seeing. We, I just spoke to our staff on the ground there today uh, and they have spoken to some of these children and they come across the border. Uh, we spoke to a boy uh, aged 10 who was talking about children getting shot at uh, at the border and killed. Spoke to a girl similar age who said that her house was burning and she had to leave her mother who was very ill in the house. These are things that should not be happening. And of course, we urge to stop this violence that is happening. And we also urge the international community to be aware of what's happening and to help all these people who have crossed the border into Bangladesh. Bangladesh is very hard pressed. Uh, it's raining there. We are seeing these people. They can hardly find shelter. Uh, and it is not too late to be to really get in the help. We are there on the ground and we will be he uh, able to help many of these children uh, if, we get, if we get the right resources to do so. And, and, and what about the unaccompanied children? What are their stories? What has happened that there are unaccompanied children making their way into Bangladesh? Of course, we are, also, we are always extremely worried about unaccompanied children because these are the most uh, vulnerable people on earth. They have no one to look after them. Uh, they only have the international community, actually, uh, and NGOs like Save the Children to look after them. And they are so at risk of being uh, taken away to trafficking and other criminal uh, uh, offences. So we must protect these children. And that's why we need to be on the ground. And luckily, Save the Children, we're already there on the ground in Bangladesh. Uh, but not many other NGOs are on the ground in there. Uh, and we can help these children, creating safe spaces for them, where we can also help them uh, get through the trauma that they, these children have experienced. You said you want the international community to step up to this challenge. What exactly do you want countries like the UK or your own Denmark? What do you actually want them to do? What is it now? Is it taking people in? Is it sending aid out there? What's the idea? It is helping Bangladesh, basically, and helping NGOs like Save the Children be on the ground. I have no doubt that when uh, ministers from all Western countries see what's going on, they will want to be helping as well. And what is, what, what is needed here is speed uh, and, of course, more resources to get uh, into these uh, very, very vulnerable children. You would presumably say that it's better to stop the problem at source. Now, can you get into... Myanmar, to Rakhine province there, to the state there, to see what's going on and, 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 and try and help people back there. And unfortunately, we can't. We are working in Myanmar, we, and we also work in the Rakhine state. Uh, but, where, but in the northern part of the Rakhine state where this is happening, no one has got access. And of course, uh, that's even more worrying because we can only, the only eyewitnesses that we have are the children we are asking when they arrive into uh, Bangladesh. And I can assure you that we will be doing that. We have asked many children already. We will keep asking them because they are the people, the children that see what's happening uh, in the north of Rakhine state. But say the children, other NGOs, uh, UN agencies cannot get access into that part of the country right now. Very briefly, you were in Myanmar in 2012. You met up with Aung San Suu Kyi when she was opposition leader. You must be desperately disappointed with her reaction to this I... crisis in her country. 
I have been in Myanmar. I have visited the, the, the government that wasn't elected back then. I spoke to Aung San Suu Kyi back then. And I also raised the question of, of uh, the Rohingya people that were already then, they were being, uh, they were, they were being uh, prosecuted. They, were being, they, were, they had a very difficult time in Myanmar. Uh, and of course, uh, I, I only want to urge everyone to step up. It is not too late to save thousands of children in there, thousands of families. And these people, we must remember, they're very poor people in general. I mean, they are not wealthy people. They're not wealthy communities. There's only one reason why they would start to walk over the, uh, the border to Bangladesh, walk for days to get in there with absolutely nothing. And that is because what they're experiencing on the ground is so horrendous. They, ha they have no other way than to start walking. Hello, Thorning Schmidt. Thank you so very much. Thank you for your time. Thank you for having me.